China State Councilor and Foreign Minister Wang Yi chaired a high-level forum of the UN Security Council Friday. He made clear Beijing's first priority is upholding multilateralism. But there's also a tension on the deep differences between China and the U.S. Liling Tan joins us live from New York. Liling, what more can you tell us about what the foreign minister had to say? Hey there, RCA. So yes, this was a debate focused on multilateralism and uh, to discuss ways to update and improve international cooperation. But because this uh, session was hosted by China and it is the second interaction between China State Council and Foreign Minister Wang Yi and U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken uh, since their contentious Alaska talks, a lot of the focus and attention was on how China-U.S. dynamics would play out in this virtual Security Council meeting. Now, the good news is, from the, from the diplomatic point of view, is that this was considerably more civil than what took place in Alaska. But still, there were criticism, veiled criticism, uh, directed by both sides at the other. Have a listen. International rules must be based on international law and must be written by all. They are not a patent or a privilege of the few. They must be applicable to all countries, and there should be no room for exceptionalism or double standards. Asserting domestic jurisdiction doesn't give any state a blank check to enslave, torture, disappear, ethnically cleanse their people, or violate their human rights in any other way. Now, the U.S. is among countries that have accused Beijing of violating human rights in its Xinjiang region, with some nations uh, alleging uh, that, that Beijing's actions there amounts to genocide. Now, Beijing has strongly denied this and says that Western nations, especially the U.S., concocted and disseminated, disseminated false information and that the Xinjiang issue isn't about uh, human rights, nor ethnicity, nor religion, but about combating terrorism and separatism. Now, China has also accused the U.S. of exerting what it calls long-arm jurisdiction and of causing humanitarian disasters through military intervention. Now, it's important to note that these accusations, while not new in and of themselves, have been taking place in a climate where China has been growing its participation and involvement at the United Nations and its influence around the world. And while the Biden administration is trying to repair its Amer uh, America's international reputation here and also re-exert itself on the global stage. So it's important to know that this is happening in that geopolitical context, even if it's taking place under this umbrella promise of multilateralism. RCA? Uh, Lillian, clearly there are deep divisions and disagreements, uh, but there are also areas of agreement. Talk about that. Yes, that's really the upside here. There were areas of, um, of uh, consensus, uh, especially when it comes to working together, cooperating to address the more immediate threat of the COVID-19 pandemic, making sure there's equitable access of vaccines, but also dealing with the longer term threat from climate change. And in terms of protracted conflicts and crisis, there was agreement that the failure of the Security Council to agree on anything to to adequately address these crises need to be addressed, especially when it comes to Syria, Yemen, the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, the nuclear proliferation issue with Iran and the DPRK. So there is agreement that the stakes are too high not to cooperate, and not just between China and the U.S., but among the U.N. member nations.